it got violent. The first, like, oh, by, I'm sure. by the th- last three flips, I had like kind of bear hugged Sarah, and we we're like picking up momentum. And oh, oh my god, yeah, no. dude! We, by the time we hit the last fourth roll, we were like, you could, like you airborne, it. like it, it hurt. Oh. Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah. Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. What's up, you guys? We're back. We missed last week because uh, C Bryant. was. C- no, don't blame me. It was totally his fault. It wasn't my fault. Or we'll blame our guest's fault. All right, perfect. He's going to be here last week. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> second. Wait a minute. You throw him on the bus already? I'm all, yeah, we're one minute into this thing. <laughs> what Not friends even. do. We're 10 seconds in, already getting blamed for everything. So it's going to be like that. That's what best all right, do. That's yeah, what they do. I'm ready now. All right, all right we are back. Um, this is episode 10, so we're stoked. We've made it to 10 episodes. We weren't sure if we were going to, but uh, hell, I mean, we're we were more worried about you guys not making it to 10. Actually, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, Sean was sure, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I was 100% sure, he's, but you know, always, our viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going well. We appreciate all you guys for uh, the love and support over the past nine episodes, and uh, now that we're on number 10, yeah. let's keep it going. So, Sean. We got a special guest today. We, we do. We He's actually really special. I mean, not special Ed kind of Aww, special. Sweetheart. Some sometimes you would think that, but <laughs> um, you know, he's um, like family to yeah. us. And uh, I guess I was like talking to Chance the other day how we all are, you know, kind of like a product of our own environment. Uh, we kind of grew up in a very similar environment. We were raised by wolves. <laughs> Pretty nice. much in yeah. Glamis <laughs> at the river. Well, that makes in sense. Glamis yeah. at yeah. the river, it's and that that's lifestyle. why he's. I mean. We can go down some of the lists that I know. I'm sure he'll add to it. But, I mean, he's, you know, was extremely active and very good at snowboarding, wakeboarding, um, motocross. So just uh, very Um, sports-orientated. Yeah, we did, like, everything growing up. Yeah, Everything fun we would try to do. Yeah, which is crazy. And it's like, I don't know. So I I just became a dad, too, right? Yeah. And And real quick, Mike. Perloff. Oh yeah, Mike Perloff. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sean. There's the intro. There's the intro. <laughs> yeah, that means a ton. Um, you know, like you said, we grew up together. Our families were. Now that I've become a dad, it's amazing to think how blessed and fortunate and like active and every weekend was either oh. Glamis or Snow Summit or Mammoth or the River. Or this and it's wild now that I've become a dad to be like, how did our parents do this? Like, how did they keep it up? Right. Um, like I'm prepping for Glamis right now. And even that between, you know, everything, I'm like, this is so much. So it is. Well, and then now, you know, he's got a beautiful young daughter and much Thank like you. people like ourselves. Um, as soon as your child is born, whether it be a daughter or a son, um, you're already prepping to buy the toys for them way oh, yeah. early. I already have about 80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> already has, I mean, is she even a, is she's what, a year and a half? It's secretly for me. Yeah, yeah. just for now. you, though. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's secretly for me for a camp like for now. But, yeah, dude, you automatically, everything about changes. It. You switch gears. And, again, I just keep going back to, like, our dad's doing the stuff, or our families, and I'm like, how did they pull this off? Like a, a rig for the river, a rig yeah. for Glamis. But, yeah, I think, dude, I was thinking last night just about all the crazy glamorous stories. And um, how old, how much old are you? No offense. <laughs> You're like 42 40 now? 41? When did you graduate high school? 99. Okay. I'm 2000. It's like 99. Get high all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Shit. That's how you remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, growing up with him being four or five years older than me, he was always my idol, dude. And I did <laughs> all Poor thing. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to let you down. <laughs> No, we went to the same. So we grew up in the gla- in like the desert yeah. and the river, yeah. right? And then, but we went to the same high schools. So. Yeah. So like he was like the f- like you were you're already older and yeah. And well, like you always looked, looked up, to up to the older kids you too. You always like, did absolutely. You, when you were like a I freshman, and you saw you. the seniors. You're like they've made it in life. Well, like and, <laughs> they've done it. And I go to high school, and Sean's in this bitching like bag truck, like <laughs> of super truck. <laughs> and I'm like little guy. I'm like I know him. Uh, yeah, like, I know. What's him. up, guys? <laughs> like I know that guy, but. No, it's awesome. I was thinking, it's just so many stories over the years. Well, when we started, when we were young, our parents were, I mean, this, back when we started going to Glamis, you had to build your own toys. Or yeah. it was like the, you know, you had an ATC or something like that, or maybe, you know, the dirt bikes. Can you go buy a razor? And before, like, there were clicks and Instagram pages and all this stuff, 
our parents and friends created their own clique, and it was yeah. called the Full Mooners. Nice. Yeah. And there awesome. was there's multiple meanings to the of Full course. Mooners, yes, and all meanings really applied at some point in time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to know the other ones. <laughs> um, but those were the times where we'd spend tons of time out at night in the dunes. And we're, when we're going out at night, we're going with our parents in the back of whatever we've got. And we've got laser stars on these things, and you're ripping Two laser through. stars, a, a a whip with one single light. One Remember, light like, bulb one, on yeah, it. That didn't work. <laughs> right. It was, you'd have to shake <laughs> yeah. it every stop. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stories. It was awesome. And, you know, so we, you know, we go through life together. And as we all kind of go different ways in our 20s, and we reconnected too. And one of the um, first times my wife um, met him, we were in Glamis. I'm like, babe, we got to go. And we're going to go down, down towards the, you yeah, know, we the canal. By the canal. Yeah. And, you know, my friends, they've got a jacuzzi down there. <laughs> He has really she, big jacuzzi. And she's yeah. like, what, she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, let's go. And nobody in our camp wanted to go. It was just all kind of like, it was like, like nah. kind of weird, too good to be true type of whatever thing. And I'm like, <laughs> let's go. And we run down there. And the first introduction to my, with my wife to them is them dressed up in what was it like Evil Knievel outfits or we something? We had or? American flag yes. onesies uh, with, uh, yeah, it was it was must have been New Year's Eve. Uh huh. Probably yeah. Do you theme nights or we what? Did, yeah, dude. Well, we, we always do the theme best. nights yeah, out absolutely. there. Always theme nights, and uh, those were the onesies for the camp bike races. So we all had yes. American flag onesies with, like, we had these eagle, like, I don't know, like Halloween <laughs> costume eagle Well, helmets. so we're, we go and convince her to get in <laughs> yes. this jacuzzi, which is warm and hot. They've got a makeshift stuff with a heater core sitting into a fire. That is awesome. And it's running, pumping the water constantly. And so we're sitting there, and they begin to do the pit bike races. Yeah. Which consists of going obviously around the jacuzzi, <laughs> and then a jump over, over the fire, the fire pit. pit. <laughs> yeah. So now there, she's sitting there going, "These are your friends, and they're in their onesies <laughs> on their pit bikes, jumping yeah. the fire pits, ripping around." And by that time, we're already back from duning, so it's like switch from duning, of course, in the big cars to yep. Jack Daniels and the pit bikes. Oh yeah, <laughs> for the rest of the <laughs> night. It's like, <laughs> all right, we're gonna jacuzzi. This is the LT80s for. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And so. it was uh, such a great introduction to uh, That's my wife. And everything, and that's how you know you have a keeper, right? When Rosie's like, "All right, she's cool. These guys are cool. Yeah, exactly. She didn't go running. She's good." No, my my wife, her first trip trip to Glamis, we were still on the Suzuki Samurais. Oh my (laughs) gosh! Okay, these guys would beat the hell out of their Samurais and keep up with us in our cars forever, though. And the Samurais would beat the hell out of us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that was they were stock. They literally we put. Oh my god! We uh, we put a locker in the back, right? And um, we did like the most. We we caged them. We were smart. at least smart enough. At least like smart. Our, safety yeah. first. Let's some harnesses them, in. Harnesses in the yeah. stock seats, but let's make them safe-ish. And Ish. we would do those things because they have like forty horsepower. Yeah, I think Probably. maybe maybe forty five. Like nothing. But they weigh nothing. They weigh nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're like side by side. Well, he would yeah, know I because they'd always constantly be lifting them off their side. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, dude, I was like I was saying, my wife, her first trip, we flipped. So like. You'd have to keep so much momentum, right? You have yeah. to, going and into it. Yeah, and so one weekend, I think this was because, or no, we just camped in the flats. It was random. But those little dunes between, like, you know, the washes and the big bowls uh-huh. yeah. were just tough in those little cars. But, like, so anyways, I'm flying into this big, like, trying to wrap a little razor, <laughs> and I miss shift right when I hit it. <laughs> and then so it just goes, boom, catches me like a oh. glove. And I look at my now wife, and I'm like, honey, we're going to flip. And she's like, it was it was only like 10 just foot kind drop. Of, yeah. It was a little dude. <laughs> but she goes, what? And I go, you're fine. Just grab. It was, yeah, I had that much, on. Yeah, I had that much time, time to be like, it. honey, grab your. Grab your and belts. she's kind of looking at me. And we just go, dunk, <laughs> dunk. <laughs> and we, we land upside down. And she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, no, we're good. Yeah, we're okay. I'm like, we're fine. Are we're you safe. fine? You're like, in fact, when we landed on our wheels, we'd keep going. Right. I'm like, <laughs> and she looks at me like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like, don't I have to rush? I'm like, no, no just let's you're just fine, get out. It's all g- yeah, I'm like trying to stay calm, too. Yeah. I'm, you're I'm, a little thinking my, yeah. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, like, is there gas? And this yeah. Is, like, <laughs> is nine, it going to catch a fire? 1985 Samurai. Yeah. Um, is she just going to get out of the car and bolt and I'm going to have to chase her? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a big hole in the roof, so we just kind of crawled out. And uh, then, dude, it was yeah. We were on our way to Olds. It was night, and uh, yeah, flipped it right back over. I broke a, a broke a whip. Other oh, than that, that's all right. Hundred percent, dude. Nice. Right back in <laughs> and go. It had. It was so funny because it had leaked some oil. 
that kid came out of the side so and it actually smoking. looked cool. It looked like a like a paint job of like the old I don't know. Like like it's coming back into the um atmosphere like a space shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. But yeah, those things are a blast. So that's why I know I had a keeper, right? Yeah. She did we flipped twice in that. Oh thing. my gosh. Um one of them we did four tumbles. Wow. Which was so sketch. So like that, side to side or over we, front we back? By the, both? Yeah. We <laughs> it was like a McTwist. It was a weird <laughs> We um we were out in the big bowls and it's uh naturally aspirated so I went to go up and oh get momentum no. yeah and as soon as I like hit the top of the bowl and turn mm -hmm. the car must have just dumped out of gas and it was the oh. same thing it just went oh. whoa, 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 whoa. and just stopped when I was sideways yeah, yeah. we're at the top of like oh, a big no. one and it was crazy cause we had we had radios too <laughs> and I I was That's on legit. I was on the radios and I went oh shit you guys oh shit and they had already kind of gone over the next bowl yeah. Um, one of our buddies was in a Funko right behind me. He was yeah, kind of yeah. following the pack. And, yeah, dude, it was the same thing, but it got violent. The first, like, oh, by, I'm sure. By the last three flips, I had, like, kind of bear hugged Sarah, and we are like, picking up momentum. And Oh, oh my God. Yeah, dude. We, by the time we hit the last fourth roll, we were, like, you could, like you airborne. It. Like, it, it hurt. Oh, that sucks. And Ouch. it scared the shit out of me. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> we're in, like, a – like, I caged it myself, first of all. And, <laughs> I, like, thank God the Aesop smart MIG welders. Like, shout it out. It held together. It held together, but, it, yeah. You're uh, like, uh-oh, do I trust myself? <laughs> yeah, like, we planned on flipping it, like, 20 to 30, which was, like, the, you know, the yeah. – the yeah. speed for the samurai is not, yeah, it was sketch. You but had a lot of momentum going. That was it, yeah. After that, I, like, looked at Sarah, and she, we, we were shaking up. Like, we were both shaking. Oh, and, hell yeah. You know, like, give me a quick Coors Light. Yeah, like, yeah. I got to cool chill down. out here for a little yeah. bit. And, uh, but we got it out. It drove out. That Did was you were outside say, yeah, we drove it out? Yeah, we That's drove crazy. it out. Um, the windshield broke. Obviously, Sarah's like, I'm going in the buggy. No yeah. offense. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're like, yeah. actually, I want you to go, too. <laughs> yeah, and I think that was one of her first rides. It was, a, like, a I don't know, the newer generation Funko. And we got back, and she's like, that's what we, we need. We need a Funko. 100%. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, honey, I need two more jobs. Like, <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. I promise. We're going to get I'm there. I'm working we'll on it. That's yep. my goal. Yep. Yeah. But for now, Samurai. So how much longer did you keep the Samurai for after it that? Was, it was listed that day. I think. That, yeah, got we're done. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, all right, I'm done. And those things, you buy them for four grand. You yeah. sell them for four grand. Perfect, I told the guy I was flipped. Yeah. He's like, hey, it's going to be a hunting vehicle. Cool. I'm taking off the windshield anyways. But <laughs> Don't need it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that's good because it's kind of not in there. <laughs> right. I love I love the glamorous stories because it's like I can have this season as I'm getting ready. So I told you I brought the LT80. Yeah. I am more excited about the LT80 than my, my side well, by side. You're about the pit stuff, man. It's yeah, just, just chilling in your pits, hanging out at the camp like – that's the it best really time. You can have fun on anything out there. Yes, like anything. if you're, you know, with your, with yeah, your, with fun, your friends, yeah, with your friends, yeah, buddies, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it's hard to have fun on LT80 when everybody takes off in their sand cars. You're like, okay, guys, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah. like, can we all be on this instead? Listen, but you need both. Well, that's why we all have to take the LT80. You, you need to get an LT80. We're, I know. We're They're hard mobbing. to find nowadays, man. Yeah, they want good money up. for them. Yeah. They do. They want good money for them. AT70s and LT80s are yep. like, yeah, all of a sudden they're like twice their value they from are. 10 years ago. Look at a 200X or something, a little three-wheeler, big three-wheeler. That's what I was thinking. And, and Jake Mach, another of our yeah. old school full, menor, full mooners, he's like, you can't cheat, dude. He's like, you might as well buy like a big toy. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're uh, right. I guess you're right. Damn it. Like, but still. You're but right. come on. So, but that's awesome. So now, you, how did you get into the property management? Yeah. Um, so everyone that I knew, so like right out of high school, everyone I knew that made a lot of money was in real estate. Okay. And I was like, I got to get into real yeah. estate. Like I've Smart. got, you know, really big goals. So I got my real estate license at 18 and uh, that was 04. And that was like in the real estate boom. Yeah. And things were going yeah. rad. And I, but I was 18, right? And I looked 15. I was like. 140 pounds, <laughs> little little baby Mike, and um, so I, baby Mike. <laughs> yeah, I get into working for this brokerage, and uh, at the time I was I was working at a restaurant too, but it was going pretty good. And then one of my high school, um, this guy, so I went to high school with his daughter, uh -huh. kind of we're in the same group. Mm -hmm. He just started a property management company, oh, wow. and it was commercial property management. And he's like, hey, you know, I think I was making, I was hourly at the real estate company. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I'll pay you like legit money. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, okay. at the time, legit yeah. was like 40 grand or something. Yeah, though. Yeah, was yeah cool. I was 19, yeah. 20. I'm You're like, like, that's legit. This that's is good money. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird how as soon as I got into this in, that industry, I just kept kind of like taking little steps. Yeah. Um, so I did brokerage for 
uh, property management for five years. Then I got into brokerage for three years. Things started going really well. Um, and then that industry, like the property management industry specifically, there's kind of a ceiling, right? Like as a property manager, sure. you're not making over 150, yeah. 100, like that's like the ceiling. Yeah. Unless you're buying and you own. And Unless you own doing that stuff, yeah. 100%. Um, but I just want to keep going up. So I got into sales. Um, I started with actually in landscape sales. Nice. And yeah, I never like what kind of like landscape sales. Like what so like commercial landscape, like Park West is a big company cool. or like oh, okay. just big. And there was like decent money in it. And yeah. I was like, I never, I remember I had like at the time I'm still single. I'm like early twenties and I, Still didn't want to work for a landscape. I wanted to be in real estate. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was still trying to pick up chicks, and they'd be like, what do you do? And I'm like, I work for a landscape company. And they're, <laughs> they're like, like, what? You mow lawns? <laughs> Freaking <laughs> dork, yeah. right? Like, I had so much pride back then. I'm Get like, a no, leaf no. blower and shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that was, you know, the single days or whatever way back then. But long story short, got into that, got into construction. Um, now I work for a law firm. So it's been, like, kind of this weird. Yeah. Yeah. Big jumps. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought about going back and, you know, revisiting the real, real estate, estate side? Yeah, 100%. And it's cool because I still have <coughs> so many relationships in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, of course, the I think the – It's there. The goal is, yeah, I think in my heart it's there. And my family's still in real estate and kind awesome. of all that. So I still, like, manage my dad's stuff. And it's, you know, it's pretty easy when you've done it for a long time. But Yeah. Now, you do a lot of, like um, – like it would be fundraising or, a, like, you um, – well, how do I say like, you, like, like you're like a front leader investors? with all of this and you're really like, you know, trying to go out there and promote, get people together, which like that's like kind of like you are in our friends, our group of friends, too. Like you're the person that gets everyone together, gets going, yeah. hypes them all up and go do this. You're kind of doing that same thing for your industry, like what's, through lots of different areas. Yeah, what's trippy is, like you said, that's just kind of my natural talent <laughs> or not talent, but that's just what I love. Well, yeah. yeah, I love crowning people, doing yeah. cool shit, like whatever it is, whether it's a slip and bleed at the river, right? <laughs> or Lake Havasu. Like you we set would, it up. We, yeah, we would we tell everyone we got two hundred feet of tarp that we're setting at the awesome. you know, on the shore at Lake Havasu on Saturday. Yeah. Everyone be there. Which We've is got so a DJ. awesome. But nobody realizes how much that sand jacks you up, dude. Oh, when yes. you go so slip and bleed. It, yeah. it, it, slip and bleed yeah. I did it with chance and stuff too. We did it on the <laughs> river and Dude, these poor girls would come and just oh, be like, yeah. oh, I love this. I want to do it. And then they just got road rash. It looks you're like so great in pictures, but oh, when you actually do it, you it get to sucks. the bottom, you're like, all right, that was, I did I'm it good. once. Yeah, you I'm have done. to have a raft or something to do it. 100%. <laughs> we learned that. Yeah. yeah. It's like sandpaper, man. Uh -huh, we exactly. started taking the big lily pads and oh, putting nice. it underneath. No way. And that's, that's smart. It probably helps a lot. 100%. You yeah. go way faster, too. Really? Yeah. Almost too fast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Anyways. I love I love doing that stuff. So um, traditional marketing in our industry, I think ten years ago was very, I don't know, I don't want to call it confrontational, but it was like you went in and almost cold called, and you yeah. hit your numbers, and you'd go to you'd visit ten offices in a day, and you deliver them donuts, and that's crazy, and like very that corporate was, old school, yeah, salesman. corporate old school salesman door stuff knocking. Yeah. That I was like, yeah, that stuff's kind of. I don't know. I just, in my heart, I'm like, why don't we plan like some cool stuff? We'll get a band at the beach. Some events. And like, we'll have people come to us. It'll be fun. Yeah. And then that kind of also, like I always was involved in different charity stuff and just cool stuff we do. Uh, one of them is called the Thanksgiving Basket Brigade. Nice. We literally put laundry baskets. We put a turkey in them and then all of like the Thanksgiving fixings. And we take them to like, I'm getting chills because it's crazy. Dude. We take them to literally like 300, 400 families what? throughout Orange County. Whoa. Um, wow. So, so, yeah, we partner with this this organization organization called America on Track. Okay. They go to all the schools and find like less fortunate families and then just give us lists of like, last year I think we did like 450 families. Wow. And it's stuff like that. So, whoa. Where it's just like, it was cool in my heart i'm like yeah. this is dope the first time i did it i'll never forget i delivered this basket to it was in costa mesa i uh -huh. lived in east side costa mesa and okay. there's like kind of weird pockets of you know just less fortunate people basically uh -huh. and i walk up to this house and this little girl probably four or five and speaks spanish and uh, she answers the door and she sees the thing and she literally yells like to the family like comida comida and and, like, she was oh just so God. stoked to see, like, food. Yeah. And, like, dude, it literally, like, I got that, like, crying throat <laughs> feeling. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And I see her, and, like, I see the family all come out. They didn't – they barely had furniture. 
and I like ha- I was like choking up. I'm like, here, this is from Thanksgiving. You're supposed to have, you have this little like one paragraph, like and you can't even thing. speak at that Dude, point. I like yeah. ran off. I'm like, get in my car, like <laughs> call crying. Sarah. I'm like, dude, this is gnarly. Like, <laughs> but just cool shit like that. And That's unreal. I just found that like marketing, as far as what I do and how I build relationships that ultimately lead to business, it was yeah. better finding like common goals and. Not just stopping wow. it. But it's, you have, you're going through a genuine process. And yeah. that's how you're going to make real connections with real people instead of it just – you took almost a business transaction out of it and made it a relationship business, 100%. which most businesses are all about relationships. Yeah. And you know, being able to have that one-on-one with someone. Yeah. And if it's strictly business, I mean – might just be at the gas station, the guy taking your money and walking away. Right. True. And that's what I, it was funny when I interviewed for my company now, they're like, they, they recruited me and they're like, we heard you're the best. And I'm, they're like, why is that? And I think they expected, it's like they're a top notch law firm. So yeah. what, what would you, what did you say? I why are you the best? I just said, I love people. That was it. It was that simple. Yeah. And they looked mm-hmm. at me like expecting some like something. You know, I went to barrier. USC and I'm <laughs> yeah. you know, some bullshit. I literally Harvard, was just like, I, this, yeah. I, yeah, I just genuinely love people. That's all and it that's, takes. That's all it is. That's dude. all it I, takes. It, it's not being fake in sales. Like you see the people that are like, you know, kissing ass. Oh and, hey, gosh, it's yeah. so great to see you. How many kids do you have these days? And you're like, yeah, uh, people can cut through that. Yeah. And you know, and the, you know, and, and we know those, you know, and it, it's, it's takes all types too. It takes those people too. sometimes that hits with certain personalities. Yeah, for sure. It does. Um, um, what were one, you did a, vi- a video not too long ago and I forget exactly what it was. You, I'm sure you remember where you were doing something with the, um, was it the pillow with all the ranch oh, and the shit. flower and the flower challenge? The, was it the flower <laughs> challenge? Now, did, did you create that on your own or did you find that? I found that. Yeah, totally honest. Yeah. Have you seen those videos? I they I take, have. They take okay. a flower and a pillow. Yeah. And uh, it's like you ask a question or no, rock, paper, scissors. It is. Whoever loses, just slam their pillow or their face into the <laughs> it pillow. It is the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. Is yeah, flower all over it or what? No, it has flour. Yeah. It starts off with flour. And then it goes yeah. to like ketchup, ketchup then eggs, and oh then my ranch, God. mustard. Whoever loses gets a Yeah, every time. So and every just, time it's a new thing. Yeah, and it's oh kind of to get that like well, viral shit. Yeah, for sure it is. hilarious. Yeah. That's all we're going it for. Is. Well, and basically, and at, for, the best part is at first they're both kind of like, okay, dude, here you I go. Guess we go. And then the next, <laughs> like as it gets going through, it's like it's rock, like, paper, scissors. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bam! <laughs> like, it escalated, dude. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was fun. But, yeah, that kind of stuff, I try and be creative, too. I've always, like, grown up in music and stuff yeah. like that where I try and get the creative stuff that gets a little bit of viralness. That was, like, the bucket challenge back oh, yeah, in the, the day. Oh, yeah, the ice bucket challenge. We did a going. bunch of that. Yeah. yeah, just for fun, and it's fun. <laughs> you see so, the bucket actually falling off and d- smashing them in the heads and <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, that was, oh, yeah, there was some gnarly ones. That was the other thing is I always had the ability to take, like, corporate, like, law firms, for example, and be like, this is what we're doing today for yeah. marketing. And they're like, what the fuck? You're going to take flour on a pillow? <laughs> and so what are you doing, Mike? Like it was, I love. Oh, so it was for the law firm you were doing yeah, it? Yeah, it was nice. raising money for the California Legislative Action Committee, with the, which nice. is like a lobby group. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was getting, our goal is to build uh, more social media followers and, and raise money for it. Cool. And it's just hilarious because my, <laughs> the attorneys and paralegals in my office are like fucking Mike. Every day it's like a new thing. Like I'm, really? I'm doing. We're like a the, law firm. Yeah, they're like, come on, we're a professional <laughs> law firm. Exactly, we're this, professionals. Yeah, and you know you have to. You, there's a balance, of course. And yeah, you gotta. You definitely. But have like to be in professional, lo- but be fun. Th- that's but that's almost like how it is in all industries when you really think about it. There's the way things have been done. And those people are still probably at the very peak of a lot of these businesses, yep. but they're on their way out, and they're really True. not trying. Yeah. And they're really not trying to sh- rock the boat too much because they're just on their way out. There's cruising, and then you have the younger generation like us coming through, really trying to f- fill in that void because yeah. you have everyone is human. I mean, I don't care how many people at that law firm sit there and talk smack on it. They're laughing at those videos. Somebody else oh, yeah. doing it all night yeah, long. They and they think it's hilarious. They like, yes. you right. Know, yeah, they they can want, relate they to They don't it. want to let down their hair because they're a, a top-notch attorney. Yeah. But you know that they're cracking up. But what happens with that is you guys are probably more approachable from potential business partners than any other firm out there. And I they totally can approach you. That. Yeah. When you're just human. And, yeah. and you that's show the that other side. thing. Sometimes if you're not so polished and you're just human, dude, and you just – this is me – like I it's remember easier to talk to you. Yeah. And you are not some like, I don't know, dude, there's, there's a people that are approachable cause they're that good. 
like I I don't know if you guys ever feel True. that, but like no, I feel that sometimes for sure. there's these owners of companies yeah. that went to USC and they're freaking yeah. 110 percent polished. Yeah, and I it, it's like. Well, that guy like, is – you'll see him at a own. trade show, and they're mm-hmm. not talking to everyone because there is that, like, people get nervous, and they yeah. don't want to – you know. And so, yeah, I think being approachable is huge, and your industry is crazy. And I love, like, every year at the Sand Sports sh- Super Show, you're, like, the hangout spot always. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that right? Sand Sports <laughs> yeah, Super Yeah, Super Show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's like you guys – He is the party for sure. And you guys have the family feel. And it's uh-huh. like everyone that walks up, you got your little – I don't know if we can say this little secret stash of Coors Light, maybe somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mean to throw you under the bus. Maybe that's just for me. He's like, my. Uh, well, but, but no, well, there's, I mean, there's well, that. It's thing. A, yeah, I mean, it is. Because it's a. I mean, when you're passionate about what you do, you create friends and you become approachable. And we, like, when you have people with similar interests and likes, you become friends to them. Like, everybody there at that show, mm-hmm. we have something in common with. Everybody has yeah, something in yeah. common there. Like, you might be walking past, you know, 5,000 people all day, but you have something in common with all 5,000 people you yeah. walked by. You could literally be friends with anyone there if you wanted to because you have the same interests. You're yeah. all there for the same reason. Yeah. And, like, when we come to the show, like, that's where we see a lot of our glamorous family, too. And, oh, for you know, sure. And that's yeah. the start of the season as well. It really is kind of the kickoff one. Yeah. This punk didn't make it this year. You know, too busy for us over I had there. A but wedding, dude. <laughs> I was officiating a wedding. Come That's on. epic, though, too. <laughs> it's an actual. Did you go excuse. on? Did you go online and uh, get your uh, get your officiant like yeah, records? Yeah, yeah. Universallifechurch dot org. Nice. <laughs> so <laughs> rad. Pay your hundred bucks and you're. Uh, it was fun, dude. We had a really fun wedding. That was awesome. I like, saw that video. I heard you were very good with it. You did. It was fun. Yeah, well. I like it. I it's same thing, just like in my work world. I try to make yeah. it fun. I told, I like had hilarious stories, and that's uh, so awesome. It was a good time. Yeah, we got to tell old school glamorous stories. I feel like I would regret <laughs> some of our. And as I'm driving <laughs> here, I'm like, okay, we need to set two things straight. First of all, all these stories <laughs> are past the statute of limitations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to, I want to set the record straight. These stories uh. were definitely in the late '90s, <laughs> early 2000s, and the second is like, dude, it's crazy now, especially that I'm a dad. I think back. So these stories are back when Krusty Demons of Dirt. Oh yeah. Just came out, and then also I was thinking it's it was also the Jackass CKY oh, two K no. days. Oh no, yeah, CKY it was, man. Yeah. We're like fifteen, sixteen, mm-hmm. like fifteen to twenty. Insane. And so the other thing is like back then, like it was a different thing. And now that I'm a dad, I always tell like the younger generation, <laughs> like genuinely learn from the stupid shit that. 100%. Thank God, knock on wood, we didn't hurt anyone, usually, yeah. but ourselves. Yeah. Well, like, like or being maybe at Glamis and going out to what we call Lights Out Hill, which is the tallest dune up there. And, yeah. and our parents, you know, with we're kids, decided it's a great idea. And these buggies, if we go race all the way to the top of this thing and then turn the lights off and turn the car off and roll backwards down. Just full oh free fall. God. Full free fall. Full free Just, fall. All your tire paddles. Yeah. I mean, so if you go, you're. Yeah, you're going Doing over. what he did in the Samurai all the way down the hill. <laughs> yes, oh, my dude. God. I yeah. still can't believe, like, we would – these are the big, like, the top big bulls yeah. that are, you know, what? how big are those, 500, yeah. whatever they well, are. there's Here's a really there. big yeah. one right off of, like, pad – Two straight What's out. Sunset? There's one Isn't that big like Sunset Hill now. No, remember? it's inward a little bit. Okay. It's, yeah, it's little a big steep yeah. one, but it's kind of like shallows out. And that was lights out bull. And it, it's scary to go down it forward with your lights <laughs> on driving. <laughs> Let <laughs> alone backwards, no lights <laughs> yeah. in the dark, pitch black. The best two would be going up car by like cars next to each other. Uh-huh. So like you know their family, oh. our family. I'm I'm go in the together. Yeah. yeah, we go up together and then, and then just down. all shut off and you're looking like <laughs> and everyone's going back together. We'd be just little hoping kids. you don't go into yeah. each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> I remember we hit a bush once and it was like somehow my dad just varied like five degrees off course and there was a bush oh. and to nail the bush. We caught air backwards. Yeah. Hit bushes flew everywhere, but it was like game on. Well, and this, I mean, I forget. I don't know if it was a Volkswagen. Was it a Volkswagen in there? But it had a big nitrous bottle on it, it everything a, in it. A Toyota MR2 That's motor. That's what it was, yeah. On nitrous. Unlimited. That's dope. Yeah. Nitrous. Yeah, those were. I mean, 30 years ago with a nitrous up. bottle hanging on the, on the doom yes. buggy. Yeah. It would catch fire. That was like his, like, <laughs> that was his, that was his party trick. Yeah, yeah. Like he would, as soon as it let off at the top of the hill, anytime he'd go up, it'd, it'd do this big flame spray. 
thrower and he's like yeah that was the party trick like dad do the fire trick but yeah some of our so i was thinking lt80 stories my brain is this whole season i'm I'm wrapped up in my lt80 that i just got pimped out i'm i'm hoping that one of our glamorous family nick frick i'm trying to get there because he always has the the rat shit he does he's got so much time on his damn hands shout out to nick yeah his at270 last year was so clean still didn't run very good even though he's got all the time in the world to get it fixed yeah yeah but so we but then every one of our friends, though, last – well, not everyone, but every person who had an LT70 yeah. got fat road rash on their legs. Oh, for from sure. The, or not the LT70, from the, the 70s, the yeah. ATC 70s. ATC 70s, yeah. Nick was like my pit bike attorney this year, and he's like, bro, four wheels. And I could see, like, the look in his <laughs> eyes. He's like, stick with four wheels. Oh, I, mean, I just got an ATC, too, so I was like, oh. oh yeah. I know I'm going to hate myself for it. I but. mean, it's not the falling off that is really the problem. It's the falling off and then it's staying with you between your legs. For sure, that yeah. That hurts. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I was thinking, me and Steve-O, one of our other buddies, yeah. we, you got to do an episode with him. He's I wild, do. dude. Yeah. That, that was like my real direct wingman forever. <laughs> and uh, we used to take LT80s, and we did this challenge where going down from Roadrunner towards the canal, there's all those bushes, right? Just scattered bushes. Yeah. After that little, you know, break, we would do this challenge where we'd look each other in the eyes and match speeds. Oh and my God. you couldn't look forward and we'd just go straight into the bushes. <laughs> but we're like 15, so like. <laughs> All just, right, that's fair. All right. This is when you could bounce, right? Yeah, it's but fine. We uh-huh. would do a challenge of who could go the fastest and farthest and you'd just be flying, like whatever they do, LT80 speed. But your buddy all of a sudden would just hit a bush and you'd see their heads go oh. fly into the air, eat shit. Like just the craziest we thing. We used to. The there's this thing we. Our buddy Steve Granke, you refer to uh, remember yeah, him. 100%. He's um, actually got some property in Glamis too. Um, he's coming back out this year. He bought a couple brand new Funkos. I, Ooh, uh, should be rad. Is that Granke? He used to race pro buggy. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, we used to do. So he had the property what was back then, Dirty Bobs, and so he used to like you know there was some individuals that stayed there that would kind of work out yeah. of it, and I don't know. I mean. I don't know how to paint the picture of these individuals, but they lived in Glamis, right? right. And they were there during the summer, so no Thanks offense picture. to those people. No, not at all. <laughs> but that's you know, <laughs> I so get it. that was their lifestyle. We would yeah. go out there, and they had this thing they called networking. And so you're hopping in the back of like this Chevy truck with this camper shell that has a strap from one wheel wheel to the other, holding it on. Yeah, it's got a. Um, it would have a you know like the a tow not the tow truck you know the tow trucks they have like the pickups thing that pull in the back. Um, like the hydraulic thing that goes like the repo trucks have that pick up the cars. Yep. Oh, it had yeah, like yeah. one of those in the back, but it was like stick welded to the sheet metal in the bed. Nice. Not really to the frame. So I don't really know. Oh what, my God. I mean, I'm sure if you ever picked up anything, it would, it would just, just ripped right off, r- ripped right off. But well, the best part is you had NASCAR tires on the back of this thing. Nice. So you hop, you're, you hop in this thing. Like we're going to go networking. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> what? Networking. So you're already weirded out that you're even in this truck. <laughs> like what's right? happening? And you're going, yeah. what's happening? And, Next thing you know, you're like free go- candy on the side. Oh yeah, of for the- sure. Get so you in. for anyone that's familiar with Glamis, you go into these areas and the washes that are very powdery, and there's trees, so it's kind of like down in the valley. Yeah. And there's holes everywhere, and there's lots of holes all over the place from you know like the mices or snakes or whatever. Yeah. They would these crazy fools would take ether, load up ether into these holes. What? Light it, <laughs> blow and it, it up. would go boom. But the problem was, is you don't know it, where it's going. You don't know where it's coming. <laughs> right. It could be <laughs> underneath. Could blow out you, right here, right there, because there's so many trails. And next thing you know, you see flaming little mice. Shut up. Shooting oh. out of the ground. <laughs> okay, we're going now. We're next week. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting out. What do like, we need? It was That's the really... wild. It was so wild. I mean, it's, what is that? It was like because you just didn't know if you're gonna. I mean, you could be just sitting there going, "Okay, where's it coming from?" And then boom, and then take a flaming mouse to the face. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we always wanted to blow stuff up. It, I think it was yeah, always was the, the thing. Well, because we grew up in an era where they had magnesium blocks. Yeah, and oh, you yeah. would light that stuff and be at the hill, and it would be so bright. You thought it was the coolest yeah. thing ever, and it would stay lit forever. And then also the next coolest trick you see at the hills when you know they would always have the industrial size paper towel rolls and you'd soak them in a five gallon bucket oh for a, you know a day or two right get it get in there and you go to the top of olds and light on fire and it's just a rolling train of fire <laughs> all the way down the hill like or the soby bones man the soby bones were awesome back oh, in the day 
best. Yeah, I, I mean, you get pretty wor- good at those things. The worst is we bring like a 36 block of Sobe, you know, glass yeah. bottles and wake up the next morning in camp and go, what did we do? So there's like, glass <laughs> everywhere. If they blew up good enough, they oh, disintegrate. No. But by yeah, the end but of the night, you're getting a little sloppy and yeah. a couple like fail and there's just glass all around the fire. So you're like, so let's sketchy. see what happens if we don't put a hole in the top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> But yeah, that hole had to be a perfect size, though, too. Like, it really did have to be perfect. We had the most wicked uh, Roma can awards ever, too. Oh, oh those are the best. Those you put the goggles on. So sketchy, And just get had after it. had to have goggles, and then it turned that mortars would work as perfect hand grenades, too. And <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I never got that far. <laughs> we, we would Blow do someone's that. off. This is when we're still camping down the can- by the canal. Yeah. So you're kind of, like, out of, you know, out of yeah. all the all – the crazy or all the real people yeah I don't know if that, <laughs> the real people all the people that are being real serious and we're down there in american flag onesies you know <laughs> shooting and each other with fireworks we would do on the pit bikes this is we we stopped this but we would we would put a five gallon gas tank under our seat and then run from the flame so it was fun like you your buddies would start oh and it'd be the God. flame chasing that escalated a couple of times into like some bush incidents. <laughs> That's like, probably good that you then, stopped that one. And then bush also incidents. like a, a light on fire. One ten. I remember we had one like. Oh my like, god! My buddy fell. He it finally caught sure up with them and then he, he everywhere. fell and ditched the bike. And then like we were all trying to go back to pull the gas away. And just, <laughs> we started like I think that was when we're like, all right, we're gonna start like a forest fire. Like yeah. no more of that. So but, those trailers to catch on fire. Yeah, those were like the motocross days too. We we'd uh, we do night rides to olds with yeah. just mag lights strapped to our helmets. Nice, your helmets, yeah. Which to this day, I have a freaking you know Baja Designs whatever watt freaking light bar, and I still can still barely see. Still barely see. Uh-huh. Still back then, enough. you could see this much. Well, yeah. And then the best part is you could also have somebody on the back of your dirt bike too, legally. Yeah, yeah. Well, and back then, I no, still now. Can you still ride? Two you can still ride doubles on dirt bikes. Yeah, what? Just I like motorcycles. That. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. I, yeah, but you ride doubles on the street on a Harley or yeah, something. You, can, you, you still do, yeah. can. Yeah. Luckily, dirt bikes were. They're like. I feel like if you're just cruising old two, they're forgiving, right? Yeah, they are. You got like on a dirt bike, you can ditch too. Yeah, like, exactly. You, get you can into fall trouble, right over, no problem. Fall right yeah. over in the sand. And if bad. you hit like you know in a buggy, you hit a big dune and you're no momentum. You're gonna get stuck. Whereas a little dirt bike, you can kind of either power up or yeah. flip yeah. it yeah. over. Yeah. But, so yeah, we had some wild nights showing up on dirt bikes. <laughs> And it was it was the best because people would be like, "You're fucking you're kidding. out of control." How did you get here? And we'd be like, "We came from Roadrunner." They're like, "No, you didn't." And we're like, like yeah, "Yeah, we did. We really did." Oh um, yeah. yeah, that's that best. Like when you're that long ass ride, you get over the hill, you see everyone, you're like, "Yes, we're there." Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. and we're rolling it right now. And then you're bikes. like, "We're the Rangers." <laughs> right. Oh yeah, that's a story that's past ten years for the record. Again, you're good. yeah. But it's like Thanksgiving night. It's midnight. It was me and Steve-O. We're like 18. We've got our flashlights. We come <laughs> over the hill. He's in front of me. He goes down the hill, and there's a ranger, like, top corner. Sees him right away. Bam. Lights oh, him up. Oh, shit. And I am still he, – he gets lit up, and I'm still behind him. But we're just a two-pack. It was just the two of yeah. us. And, like, we always, like, stick together no matter what. Yeah. Right? Like, that was, that was just – you, you yeah, have to you be that safe. Like, yeah. exactly. You don't ditch your buddy. So the, the buggy starts chasing him. But I have to start chasing the buggy. So okay. it's like the fun day with him. <laughs> Dude, it was the Funko <laughs> buggy chasing Steve-O. Oh, my and God. And I start chasing them. And so, I, so Steve-O, again, this is 15 years ago. Yep. And, uh, and we have, so like, the utmost respect for the Rangers and everyone. Yeah. It was just the situation where, like, we don't want to get popped for no We're lights. We're going to go. Like, we just got to go. So yeah. he, he mobs it. And he goes, obviously, a Funko can't cut through crowds. For so sure. He's smart to go through, through some crowds. And you're Funko. following him through the crowds too, I end or up teaming you back up with them, the yeah. Crowds. But then he takes off, and Funko like, gets hey, don't get chased without me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're together. Yeah. We're in this together. Yeah. together dude. Yeah. But only well, part of the story. <laughs> I ended up kind of so the Funko was just after him, and then I'm he goes back up the hill, and the plan was just book it yeah. into the bulls, and I'm still like next to the Funko chasing the Funko. So Steve starts just. Beeline straight, which you can do in a dirt bike, right? And just yeah. kind of scrubbing. Like, as fast as you could up the top of the hill, scrub, go, go over. Go down, yeah. Yeah, as fast as you can over. Get out of sight. And the Funko, of course, is duning to try and keep up with them. He, We're just in flashlights, so it's not like a oh. buggy that you can really see. But he finally kind of loses them. I go over the hill, catch up with Steve. Oh, 
we're both like, holy crap. <laughs> and then, dude, the best, we're like, so we calm ourselves down. We're like, all right, dude, do we want to go back? <laughs> yeah. We're like, no, <laughs> actually, go back we still got to go hang it old. Let's go do it again. We didn't come all the way here, so we went back. Uh. It was a classic night. <laughs> We were smart enough, too, because we ran race graphics, so we had our numbers yeah. with, like, C. Collins and M. Perlov yeah, on yeah. all of our plates. So we get back, and we pull into camp, and we're still – at our times, like, our we always camp with our parents. Yeah. It's yeah. always – our parents yeah, had too. Yeah. But we got back, like, at 1 a.m., and we took off all the plates and, like, put them in our trucks. And I, <laughs> nice. I remember I, my dad going, what happened last night? <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> and knew. Like, and we he told him. He definitely knew, we're, yeah. He's like – why are your plates off? And we're like, yeah, well, we had a situation. Yeah, and we ran from a uh, – Yeah. I, I, there was one story. Uh, it was New Year's Eve, 99, going to 2000. We're yeah. all young, and we're partying at comp. And my buddy had you – know, Greg. Yeah. He had his – Stink, right? Yeah, he had his three <laughs> – Stink, yeah. Our, we all had great nicknames when yeah. we were younger. <laughs> Hilarious nicknames back in the day. Um, stink. He was on his three-wheeler with his girlfriend on the back, right? Back in the day when you can kind of get away with some yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he decides, I'm going to leave early, right? And so we're camped on Gecko. So I'm like, yeah, dude, just go down Gecko or go down um, Sand, Sand Highway. Yeah, go down Sand, Sand Highway, Highway, hit Gecko, make a left. You're going to find us. Yeah. So long story short, we, we go back and we walk up to camp and we're like, why is this bike like got wet sand all <laughs> over it? Like, what is this? And then we're like, why is there like. Why are all the clothes wet? Oh my god, are they going <laughs> Posey yes. dude rolling, dude. He somehow he got himself messed up, kept going straight, and sends him and his girlfriend on the back straight into the canal. Oh my god. <laughs> Thankfully it was uh New Year's Eve because people were still up. Yeah. They were able to yell, they got fished out, they fished the bike out, everything. Oh but my god. sent that I mean, could you imagine what it would be like just like oh cruise shit. and the next thing you know, like you're you're in the desert. Also, sand dunes, and then I, you're yeah. swimming. I think it's like, – But you know. At that point, you know what you did. Like, oh, no. Well, this is like pro- – he wasn't like a glamorous regular, right? Like, Not at that point, yeah. A, yeah. He was just a regular because of us and going Friends. with us a few okay. times. But, yeah, I guess my point is he's probably only been there three, four times. Yeah. So it's like oh a rude awakening to what the heck just <laughs> happened. Yeah. That was rad. So um, what are some of your favorite moments that you've done? So with your career now, I mean, you've done a lot of – I mean, obviously – He's a musician too. Yeah, like he's got tons of YouTube videos out there, I believe. And you were part of a band, right? Yeah. Are you still the part music? of the band? Is it still going? We. It's hard. You jam every once in a while. You guys know how it is. Like <laughs> having hobbies, like you got to pick and choose as you get older. So, I somehow will get recruited for like random events or weddings. That's or awesome. Someone's like, you got to play our wedding. So it's like, it's not as. What you instruments know, do you play? I play guitar, piano. Um, ukulele, drums, a little bit, not Dude. so. Dude, but yeah, and then grew up, <laughs> <Ron. man. laughs> grew up as a choir boy, which um, having the <laughs> motocross glamorous, co- you know, background with all my buddies yeah. that were you know hardcore dudes, and then being a choir boy until you're the coolest dude here. <laughs> well, dude, it was so funny. Because I would just get picked on and made fun of so hard. For being a choir boy? For being a choir boy until we got to high school and choir was 95% girls. And then me and like three of my boys. Of course. And then all of a sudden my buddies are like, fa-la-la. Like, I can (laughs) say English. (laughs) Would they take me? And I'm like, nah, bro. Too late. The ship is But he wants to come hang out with you, right? They all want to come hang out. We want to come to the choir party. Of course. My buddies are like, do we have to dress up or shit? I'm like, no, dude. Rock the motocross gear. Like. That was classic as soon as you got to high school. <laughs> That's but, awesome. But, yeah, doing all that kind of stuff. Oh, now, know. have you ever gone to a piano bar and rolled up and battled and serenaded some people? Has the, pian- I mean, has the piano ever – got girls into your life because I felt like 100%. that would be Dude, my like number one thing. choice. Of yes. If I could learn how to play anything, it would be the piano. Yes. hundred percent. That was like anytime we're in Vegas or something. Oh was, yeah. Actually dude, it was really funny cause I live with Steve-O and then our other buddy, Justin, and I always call it the days when we were aggressively single. Like we're you know, aggressively like, single. going for it. <laughs> like Justin is the most handsome firefighter ever. And then Steve, a handsome dude, yeah. he's salesman. There's great talk, yeah. right? hilarious, yeah. always just doing the funniest stuff. <laughs> and then me, like we're all, but uh, yeah. So that was always, the, yeah. It, and it got, <laughs> yeah, 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 it yeah. got. So when we were living together, I, I, I have always hung my guitar on the walls. And so we planned like a, you know, like having like ten girls over. We lived in downtown Florida, so nice. we go out. Oh, so yeah, these party guys would there. fucking hide my guitar. They'd be like, "It's not coming out tonight." It's not fair. Because it's not yeah, because they're gonna lose it. Yeah, they're cheating. Cheating. motherfucker. <laughs> if you bring out the guitar tonight, game like, over for yeah, them. Yeah, they're like, "This is not not cool." But 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was your uh, chick magnet right there, the ha- guitar, dude. It was, yeah. I think that's why I learned. Like, to, I mean, you For know, in reason. hindsight, why not? yeah. I'm like, dude. Well, I loved music. Our yeah. whole family. My my dad plays guitar, and so nice. like, I would see like everyone was like, you know. And then as soon as the chicks liked it, I'm like, oh, dude, this is it. Yeah, like this is cool. But I mean, that's kind of a joke. But in some extent, like that's why it's also real. That's why I had to get good. Like, all right, I love it, but like I better be able to bust. You better be good. If I'm gonna hang this on the wall, I better be okay. Exactly, better be good. I better, yeah, yeah, better be able to sing their favorite song. Exactly. And for those out there, you really just need three songs because by that point, they're pretty much sold. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Three songs. Listen, guys. Three three songs. songs. I know Chance is playing the guitar. What are are the top three songs? Go. You you start with like the crowd pleaser, like the Sublime, right? right. Right. Where oh, everyone yeah. can kind of sing along, like yeah. "Loving Was What I Got," Love and then do "Tenacious." Well, actually, that was either second or third. But you'd kind of slowed down, <laughs> slowed down the tempo, and they kind of oh, oh like, you're he really could do some uh, Ben Harper too. But damn. well, then he would we'd be around the campfire. Seductive. He'll bring it out in Glamis and just start that's so rad. Strumming though, that's along, we'll all kind of sing yeah, along together. Just and have fun with it. Our uh, our other mom, Debbie Collins, is always like, if uh, I don't bring my guitar, she's like, Michael, why did you not? How like, dare yeah. you? What are you doing? Go home. <laughs> home. You can't camp here. Like, she's hilarious. But yeah, she always wants to play. She uh, is. I love that. Yeah, she, you yeah, she was the one that taught me how to manscape. <laughs> <laughs> manscape. Well, forced me to manscape when I was like probably fourteen, fifteen. She's like, you're a little hairy, dude. You <laughs> yeah. gotta <laughs> trim up. Well, we'd all like you. You saw each other in the glamis, right? And uh-huh. You're in in hoodies, and and then you go out to the river. True. Yeah, we'll the, the shirts river. are off, and <laughs> like, oh, that's what you look like. Oh, oh. shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was, we had the best moms, like Robin Mottram, mm-hmm. Debbie Collins, that's so of rad. course Julie, yeah. Julie and Ron. Yeah. Like, our camp moms were hilarious. They. So the camp races back then, I remember peeking out the motorhome as like a 10-year-old, and they would all be in bras and undies. I'll never oh forget. Oh, my like, God. I'll never forget, like, looking outside and being like, wait, first of all, why are they right in my quad, right? I'm like, <laughs> why? you're going to hurt my quad. Yeah. And hey, like, why are you in bras and <laughs> Yeah, and then I'd be like, mom, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> but see, the shit that we didn't realize when we were young. Like, we, we go to have a suit, too, and my parents would be – my mom would be all drunk, and my sister would be all drunk because she's a little older than me. Like, it was so funny those days. Like, oh, my God. Like, dude, they'd be flashing people and shit. Like, dude, that was, like, the thing back then. But we didn't even like, think about it as little kids. Like, yeah, oh, whatever. It's like we, all, we often think, like, are we cool, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. think we'll – Ever be as cool as our parents? Were. No, I don't think so either. No, dude. I mean, we'll be well, maybe a different kind of cool, but they were just that real fun, just good fun, cool. And yeah. the level of matchy matchiness with their setups, dude. Oh my well, god, dude, they, they were all race teams basically. Yeah. Dude, like, Ron, no, Ron was the king of he it too. Did. Like you had, dude, the turquoise banshee like matched the pinstripes on the buggy that matched the trailer, yeah. the closed trailer that went. Well, I feel like the Gibson that was that Gibson style that like just always, always flowed. Has yeah, yeah. Your dad just. Set in the stone. Threw out, which yeah. is so dope. Yeah. Now I feel like I just feel like a goon if I like. I purposely I'm like I did. Well, I my dad, I guess, had a little bit of style from back in the day because when we were younger, remember Whitewater? Yeah. At Whitewater, my dad was printing T-shirts at Whitewater with do- his Doom buggy doing a wheelie on it and selling T-shirts awesome. and stuff yep. back in the day. Yep. And all that, yeah. The, the your banshee still to this day was like that would be sick to to have again. I, I was looking at trying to. I was looking at one. Um, Shit, like, you know, the last few months, but everything's so expensive. They're, like, eight grand Dude, now. how are they so expensive? Like, what the heck? Yeah. Five years Un- ago, they were, like, four or five mm. grand. Like, yeah. like, Chance had someone that wanted to trade him his ban- trade him a Banshee, like a bitchin' Banshee for his Suron. I go, still, though, still, like, still, like, four grand yeah, for, I know, for you know, an 89 Banshee. Yeah, exactly. like, Dude, it's kind of like the boating industry, too. All the I all know. the used boats went up because the cost of entry of the new shit yep. is so, so high. insane yeah. that all of a sudden you're like, all right, well, what else can I buy to go to the and river? And nothing else was available, mm-hmm. though. And right. it was sold out. Right. If you want to buy a new one, it's two years out. Yeah, two years out and 150 grand. Exactly. And you're like, For okay. starting 22 foot. All of a sudden, you know. the 1980s, like, stand-up yeah, jet ski. Exactly. Like my point earlier, we'll get you out there. You'll yep. still have You'll a have blast fun. with your I friends. And I think it's carrying through, like, the glamour stuff is the same way where yep. cost of entry, side-by-sides are outrageous. I know. They're so expensive. It's, oh, it's, e- it's so easy to spend, like, 40. Yeah. And you're thinking, like, dude, that's I, – I have a side-by-side so I can talk shit. But yeah. it, it really is a glorified go kart. They are absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but they're great, man. They dude, really are awesome vehicles. I mean, they get you in the dunes. They get you anywhere you want to go in the dunes. Yeah, they're fast. They handle. I mean, yeah, it's not a sand rail, but guys. they're so good. fun. It's Twelve and days before SEMA. I know. Oh yeah, <laughs> Twelve days till SEMA. Yeah, you're probably going crazy. 
Yeah, that's I awesome. gotta come. I I want to see it. Like, have actually, you ever been? I've never been. No, he's never been to SEMA. Never um, been to I SEMA. mean, I'm you like, know, it's if you go out there for a week. Or I would love to try and get you out there, man. But it's trade only, and it's only for <laughs> people who go. are part of the industry <laughs> and stuff, you know. Yeah. But if you find yourself out there next week or so, look me up. Okay, I'll be there. But I think I have enough skips and attire there. Yeah, yeah it's you'll be only fine. for yeah. trade only yeah, and trade business only. people. But yeah. it's you know, the, the sad part for this year is. There's, you always had all the big auto manufacturers there. And this year, for the first time in, I mean, I've been going 26, 27 years now. Wow. Um, there's not going to be any Ford or any GM or Chevy. What? Why? They pulled out. Well, I mean, I oh, don't know. Shit. These are all just rumors. I don't even know if I should make these numbers. But I feel like they're, from what I heard before, SEMA's or Ford's budget for SEMA was $30 million. Holy moly. Crazy. That's their I, Their budget for... Not even being there, yeah, is three million. Wow, and that's just like putting up signs and advertisement type stuff without exhibiting, or it's just it's so massive, and there's so many opportunities, there's so many people. It's because it's a massive branding opportunity. I mean, I just wish our company had made that much money doing any of that big of a write off. Yeah, in yeah. Marketing, yeah, you right? have to. Yeah, I guess they have to. <laughs> but um, so that's it's going to be a completely different type of event and type of show. We'll this see year how will be it different is. In a lot of um, years. But if you haven't, man, you're so into the. You'll love it. I love. You you're a pro- it. you're yeah. a product of the industry. I right. mean, yeah. if it you wasn't for sure, 100%. if it wasn't for all those old brands and old stuff and being that, I mean, yeah. you Shoot would appreciate it more than anyone yeah. else. But because I mean, when you walk into like the Central Hall, that's where you still see all the iconic brands. They're all there. You know, like yeah. when you. Think it's the a- aftermarket stuff, right? Like the, it's all aftermarket. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Like the fab techs of the world, and like yeah. the it's every. Rough I mean, it's every everything tire from company, cars. I mean, everything for cars. I mean, you're talking okay. windshield wipers, gasket makers, fenders, wow. replacement. You know, auto you're collision. Talking about, you're talking about gas restoration, pedals, like everything. Wow. Everything. Restoration, hot rod, just anything yeah. automotive aftermarket. Like, yeah. yeah. So are you bringing any rad vehicles? We're. It's uh, got to be one of the fun parts. Like that's what's cool is. is there's so many cool vehicles that get revealed there. Like even yeah. just like built vehicles and brand new vehicles, but usually yeah. the brand new ones nowadays are being revealed earlier. Yeah. Like a lot of the new like cool builds that people are doing. What's is that? Rad. There's celebrities out there. Yeah, there's celebr- lots every, of celebrity cars. Every automotive celebrity is there. Yeah. So what's that? Like C10 Slayer or something? What's oh, DeBerties. Yeah. Oh, did you see that thing? What the Pretty heck? Gnarly, yeah, exactly. it's wild, huh? That's so, I see, I've seen it on your social media. Yeah, like, yeah. What? He's gnarly. How does it spin four tires that hard in the With back? That big giant blower on the front. Yeah, the power, <laughs> man. Unbelievable. And there's no way back there either. Yeah. So that's running Gibson too. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So rad. Yeah, that's good. DeBerties been with Gibson for years. Yeah, though. we've been with them for a long time. Yeah, I mean, DeBerti, uh, he. He used to own Trends, which was like a billet company back yeah, in the day. Yeah, like thing. And I mean, every time I go to see him, I mean, he did a hell of a job because I, I think about it every time and I'm yeah. jealous. He went and had a booth set up with this crazy bitchin' like billet, you know, logo that just spun on a turntable with back then it was like CDs for your product releases yeah. and had that in. No and that way. was his booth. He yeah. didn't man it or anything. Nothing. And it was That's just sick. every Genius. single person around, like, you know, you're in your, like, I always joke, like, I'm in my, you know, 30 by 30 jail cell because I can't leave this booth from this time to that time. Yeah. And you're just looking at that booth working and people checking it out and grabbing their CDs in it. And you're just so pissed off that you're like, why am I in my booth? Yeah. And then <laughs> they ban- then they like made that. rules where you couldn't do that again. But You couldn't, like, unman it? Every time I go to, I'm like, how do I booth. man the booth without manning the booth? Yeah. Like. Right. Can we like just have videos running where there's like people like it's a Zoom one or <laughs> yeah Zoom call? Yeah, that's that's fun. How like those creative things at trade shows get so much more attention. Like, yeah. the, have you been it to is. a boat show now where they take a boat and put it upside down above the booth? It is Remember sick. they used to at the sand show with the sand cars too. Dude, oh yeah. really? Mm-hmm. Dude, what? I always wanted to hang our MTI. I always wanted to hang our MTI above our booth at That'd SEMA so upside down. I always wanted to, but the, but That'd the be co- grand. <laughs> oh, it would have been oh, yeah. so more, <laughs> more probably. I mean, look, it's I think it's like six grand to hang a sign that weighs 15 pounds yeah. up right like, dude what was up with robbie gordon's car tipped over at the sandsports show i missed it i and heard like, it was, i just saw social media yeah and so like, i heard what? that he did it because uh he wants people to see the bottom of it right that's Which, what i heard too. that's what that's i heard how, but we also heard things that it legit they had it they're bringing it in it fell over and they left it 
But I don't know. I don't know. I was what. still curious. Yeah, I missed yeah, it. No, I was I'm definitely like, curious. But that's a great dude. Mark, dude. We're yeah. talking about it, right? Right. 100%. I feel like Robbie I mean, does a great job with it. Publicity is good publicity. Yeah, or yeah 100%. Still publicity. Yeah, yeah, still publicity. He's the king of it. Oh, <laughs> He's the yeah, king of it for dude. sure. It's crazy seeing all the shit talkers. I, I can't wait to ride one. I'm like, that's No, insane. they're going to be insane. It's I think insane. they're going to be insane. Yeah. I hope yeah. they hold up. Um, I hope they hold up because I don't think you really get parts for them. Right? So, oh, uh, yeah, that'll be. Here's a here's a question, and maybe you can give to our our listeners and stuff. Like, you are a product of our industry. That's you are the epitome of what our industry is all about. Our customers, mm-hmm. everything. The end and consumer. Yeah, you are the, the end consumer. It breaks fucking everything. <laughs> and you have managed I'm to. Like your, I'm like the dream <clears throat> client. Right. And you've yeah. managed to be successful in a completely opposite. Most more. I mean, there could be a more polar opposite True. type of industry. Yep. And applying that same thought process and that same energy that our industry has like. What advice can you give to someone that's maybe trying to get into a different industry and, and they're you? Or what advice would you give yourself if you went back in time again and you were going through this? Yeah, and that's I, – I think it's be yourself 100%, like to the core, and be confident with that too. Mm-hmm. Because, again, I would try – like what excited me personally was the – you know, the boat industry yeah. and the off-road industry. Yeah. And, and I would see how they would get attention. And then there's there's aspects from that that 100% don't apply to the corporate real estate, yeah. you know, and, but then again, it's like, okay, so the creative, creative back to that. So I had a trade show once our trade shows, you know, it's between 300 to a thousand people. I would say it's yeah. kind of the range The like the, the normal ones are three to 500. That's kind of the thing. And it's just a six foot table with like, mm-hmm. you get your little pop-up. Yeah. 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 It's one of those kind of mini trade shows. I had a trade show where I didn't bring crap because everyone brings all this shit. And, yeah, that's a big thing. Dude, I sat on the six-foot table. That was it. I had a logo. And, nice. and my joke, I would just – people walk by and they'd be like, what are you doing, Mike? I'm like, I'm on an interactive trade exhibit. <laughs> nice, <laughs> I'm like, dude. ask me anything. Like, I can answer anything you want. And it's just kind of like those things that are out of the box, yes. I think. And you have to obviously be knowledgeable of your your – client base and like what's acceptable mm-hmm. like i'm not gonna bring you know like i remember like there's some of the boat shows there's like bikini models and yeah like, that would not apply to my industry 100 no. percent. it would it would be i mean it would apply i'm sure industry, they wouldn't yes. mind seeing it but it's gonna probably but people are gonna pulls, stop by talk quite yes. the branding you're going for exactly yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so you have to be knowledgeable of your client base but then just be confident and yeah and rock your own stuff and it you all, have to be a go-getter, too. You can't like you, you can't work these trade shows and sit there and wait for people to talk to you. No. True, you got to be go-getter. It's always one of my biggest pet peeves is when you'd be working these smaller shows and stuff, and the person in the booth next to you is in the back of the booth, sitting there on their phone, doing nothing. And I'm like, Dude, yeah, I, I, go, I go, it's by. quiet. There's not many people here, but I am going to go mad and bored if I don't start talking to someone. Yeah. So you just start talking to every single person that walks by, and... Yeah. Right, you know, the day goes by and you made a bunch of customers. Yeah. yeah. And that guy's still bored over there trying to keep his eyes open because he's sitting there doing <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Something. And I think I, so I had mentors early on too that would, would have me set goals for that type of environment. Like put simple, like bring home five business cards, five, nice. new, five new business cards, stuff that's totally like I'd end up getting 10 yeah. or more. Yeah. But they'd be like, these are your deliverables and like set those up for yourself and, and always think about what you're trying to achieve. Um, so I think that's a big factor of like, just don't do the trade show, like have a plan for the trade show. Um, in our industry, I think some of my biggest strength was like, not even folk. I, I'm a social butterfly. Like I'm not going to not talk to yeah. everyone. Yeah. So there's you tra- love people. Not that. Yeah. I love people. Not <laughs> that the trade show wasn't great, but then the follow up after was where I'm like, this is where yes. I'm going to make the money. And yep. this is where I'm going to like focus. And you know, the follow up from, our industry is just, you, they kind of go by, give you, we always have raffles, right? So they give you your business card. They kind of, hey, good to meet you, blah, pat, you know, yeah. walk away. And so, like, originally, I would always be like, all right, like, I'm not just going to give an email that says, like, hey, it was great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by the booth. It was like, hey, like, I'm right by your office. I'm going to come in next week um, and say what's up if that's, that's cool. cool. Like, would love to say hi. Yeah. Why don't we get your office out to lunch? So, like. Taking the follow up to like the next level, I think, is just as important. Yes. I don't know about the yeah. you know, your industry, but I'm sure still same thing. I mean, I think it applies, applies all the way across. Even like my industry with the cinematography and the the media side of things. Like I've had a company that I've known for years, and I've known all of them. They're really cool. Well, I've been meaning to reach out to them for the past year. I'm like, I gotta do. It. I gotta reach out to. Them. And they email me like Brian. Like you know, we would love for you to do our video stuff for us. You know, we 
we we know how busy you are, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I should have hit them up a year ago. Like when I, I said I was going to. But it's like cool because like, like, oh, well, do you have time for us? I'm like, yeah, absolutely have time yeah, for you guys. Like, right. Let's make it happen. But it's like that's what's crazy. Like things you don't think about, it's like, oh, it's fine. You know, they'll, you know, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. But just do it because it's going to work. We have to become – I mean I, we go through like stages in our life where we have to be yes men. But when yeah. you become a yes man too much, then you have to start saying no again. But you have to just – be able to say yes to opportunities and not be scared yeah. of it. Just do it. Are you guys be experiencing? Yourself. Yeah. Are you guys experiencing in your industry like this, like makeup for lost time during the pandemic and stuff at all? Well, <coughs> our industry didn't stop during the pandemic. You got yeah, you busier. got busier. Uh, we were yeah. wild. It was Even wild. Even automotive we industry got up. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly! Our industry just <coughs> we couldn't do any of our meetings right. So it was yeah. like we couldn't do any of the trade shows. Da, da, da. So he did all a video st- one time about not wearing pants. Uh, like it did a song <laughs> about not wearing pants on zoom. Like, yeah, that was a, uh, that was that's amazing. Dude, You got to actually see that. It was funny. It was, it was the 13th day of the pandemic and I recorded it. So that was right when toilet paper, <laughs> was yeah. nice. so the opening scene, I dude, this is a hilarious story too. I, I'm making my own little YouTube. So the song's called Nobody Knows If I'm Wearing Pants, and it's me in, like, a business meeting. Oh, my God. And then, like, you know, it. And then fast forward to the chorus, and I'm just walking around in my undies, like, in the house. But <laughs> it was funny. Teepee was a big thing. So yeah. I put um, in toilet paper on my roof, got teepee, question mark, and this huge thing, and flew my drone up. And I'll never – it's – so the pandemic, so people are still like on edge, and yeah. oh, for sure, freaking na- out. Yeah. yeah, my neighbors come out and they're like, "Really? <laughs> I'm on my roof in my underwear." <laughs> or no, I had my I had my Zoom outfit on, so I had a button down. He must uh, be sick. He it. has it. He's got <laughs> it. He's sick. We didn't know it made you lose your mind. Yeah. Like, oh shit! Don't get COVID. You're gonna end up on your roof. Yeah. <laughs> but in your boxers. Yeah, people still give me so much shit for that. They're like, "Oh, I'm glad you have pants today." Like, there's it's so awesome. That's the best thing, though. That's amazing. Uh, so. We should probably start wrapping up here soon, but you have a podcast. You just yeah. let us know 10,000 views yeah, or downloads. Yeah, 10,000 downloads, it's which massive. is cool. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so one of, what's it about and what, why should we listen? Don't listen to it. Don't <laughs> listen to <laughs> it. It'll bore. Yeah, I think so. It, it's it's called the HOA Pros Podcast. Okay. And like my market is all um, HOA management companies primarily cool. and like all that stuff. And so it's it's all about like the professionals that serve them, right? Yeah. So it kind of stems from so it's a lot about community managers, um, and then it goes into all the the services that you know vendors awesome. provide for them. Yeah. Um, we so it was one of my like main clients that I've known for 15 years, and she had the idea of like, hey, let's do an HOA Pros podcast. Totally in my head, no fan. I love her, and I, I yeah. tell her this to her face. So I'm like. Who the fuck is gonna listen to <laughs> Who that? Who is gonna listen to it, dude? Every, and even my boss goes, "Bro, no one's gonna fucking listen to an HOA podcast. That's so stupid." No. But we have fun. Like, who really enjoys every, HOA? Everybody hates yeah, but HOA. Everyone yeah. that works in the industry. It's so funny because it's an outrage. So, like, our we kind of have like our little flow, right? And one of the ones is we always just tell crazy stories in the HOA. There's shit. I'm sure there's craziest stories. Dude, there's so many hilarious ridiculous. Like the one last week, this this lady manages a community that's by a high school. It's a high rise building. Yeah. And the students apparently had a challenge to start having sex in the stairwell. So she's got like this like <laughs> oh my god. She's got this running problem of these high schoolers coming in, leaving like use condoms in the stairwell oh my god <laughs> they don't know whether or not to film like the whole stairwell or just the entrance but so she started with the entrance so you'll see like someone walk out like little teenage dude run up and get the door and then the girl comes and dude, and then 30 seconds later they walk back out <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they walk out he's got his head down <laughs> <It's a hood> <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah but just shit like that that's like – That's that, amazing. I'm sure there's some crazy-ass stories. Crazy-ass stories. There is so. wild stuff. I guess every – I mean, I would be interested to listen to because I'm a part of an HOA at my house and yeah. just yeah. Uh, help me better understand how to deal with my HOA too probably. Yeah, yeah we're trying to like kind of pepper that in with the educational stuff. And I don't know. It's fun. I, I try to make everything fun. Like that's kind of who yeah. I am. So – yeah, thanks for the plug. Don't listen. To it. Yeah, I get oh. embarrassed as shit. I'm like, my brother's been listening. I'm like, come on, dude, don't. He doesn't listen to this podcast. So. I, don't, I don't listen to mine. Do you listen to yours? I finally kind of did. So we just upgraded our audio. Yeah. We we finally like so we got some sponsors. We're like, all right, this nice. is dope. We'll spend like I don't know. We dropped like two three grand. And so now I just want to hear the audio. Yeah, make sure it sounds good. I never knew I had a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> Until you start listening. Until to I listen to my own podcast, I'm like. 
Dude, I can't say S's. I didn't know that about me, but <laughs> now no. you're insecure about it. Yeah, no, I listened to a couple. So of just, uh, I, I I listened to one the other day with my wife. We were walking, and good. she was, made me listen to it, and I was like, pretty good. Yeah, yeah I think dude. we're all right. I think we got <laughs> this. Right. I listened to the Funko one. Was it was super cool. Chaz was, was awesome. great. Yeah. It's definitely our, it's our best one yet. Actually, it's our do, it's doing the best. Oh, I haven't really listened to that one yet. Everybody. Sorry, Chaz. Yeah. Good. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was dope. It. Yeah, and yeah, I think as long as you're having fun, right, and making the podcast, it's fun, fun and man, and staying consistent. Just keep it yeah. going. Are you guys going to do the Joe Rogan and have drinks and smoke weed while you're doing <laughs> weed? I feel like that comes up every podcast. <laughs> Does it? I think I need to fill that fridge with beers instead. Like, of what do you mean? Are we not, uh, aren't we not doing that yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we joke about it every time we haven't done it either. Yeah, we haven't done it yet. We have. So ours know. isn't live, too. So it's cool to be able to cut stuff out. Yeah, we can cut stuff out of ours, too. We've had a couple too. where we're like, oh, we went down. Well, now that we have an M&M M&M's sponsor, you know. Yeah, yeah today's podcast, to podcast. We're going to buy M&M's. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's perfect. Um well, uh, I'm stoked. Thanks for uh, inviting me. This dude, thank you for coming and yeah. sharing thank some you, awesome man. stories with us. And yeah, heck right yeah, I'm stoked. Um, for you guys. What do you What do you have left to get ready for Glamis? Um, I bought a motorhome. I saw Woo! that. That's so rad. I'm stoked. That's we good. are always toy hauler. Yeah. And uh, now that I have a little one, it's who's supposed I'm to buy so my easier. toy hauler? I know. I yeah, but it. she gets sleep in the motorhome now while you're driving uh, now. So yeah. much better. Yeah. Our our so she's 16 months, a little over oh, one, yeah. and like the cars are brutal on her. And so like looking at that, and we. Like, just like you guys were weekend warriors. So, yep. it's, you know, five hours to wherever we're going every yep. weekend. Every, and I'm yeah. like, this every weekend. poor baby is just. So, yeah, stoked on that. But, yeah, I got to do a lot of shit. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. LT80 is the only thing that's ready. <laughs> I'm going to be doing it for six months already. Yeah, I'm going to be doing an oil change Friday night for. Uh, Are you planning on going uh, out for Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, we're going to skip Razor. We've got other stuff. We're going to go, out, I think, two weekends after Razor. The I Camp Razor. Is which is, I think, the weekend before. Glam or before Thanksgiving or two weeks before? Yeah. I don't know. It's coming around so That's probably the weekend is going, honestly. Yeah. I haven't done anything. Yeah, actually, yeah. what I did to get ready is today my sand car was getting washed. Oh, that's good. Step one. Yeah. Yeah. Step one. My step one. He might good? even put air in the tires for me, too. <laughs> yeah. I pulled mine out of the trailer just to sell the trailer. Nice. Like, <laughs> and then <laughs> it runs. It started. It's good. Yeah. And then I've just been buying shit and put it in the front seats. Like, nice. all right, I'll get to that next weekend. Yeah. You know how it is. But yeah. Yeah, I do best under pressure. So oh, always, always a, like last second. Did you get a, a four seat something yet? Or I haven't. No, we're I mean they do have the little center seat ones, but I mean, what's yeah, gonna happen with gonna... with you shifting? You're gonna be bam, just elbowing your daughter the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, I don't know. We're we're gonna figure that out next season. I want to get a buggy. That's. I just feel like they're safer. Yeah. Um. I don't know. For just, sure. Yeah. I I don't know. I feel like it's up. I'm stoked. I'll get there. Exactly. You, I love Nick Frick sending me, dude. Once I told Nick and Johnson and Jake, uh, our good Glamis fan buddies, they've been sending me links like anytime, like a rad car. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I, I need like, it. I need it. I need like, it. Stop. I just, that's how my me. summer was with boats, dude. <laughs> All summer, I was like, oh, I yeah. want that boat. I want that boat. And yeah. like, even though I know they're twenty grand over, but still, it's good still motivation want it. though because it it's is, working. Always. It's totally think, working. Always. I'm like, all right, I'll get there. I know. I'm like, chat. I think. Johnson might be buying buying the old Stripperella car. What sick? If that's, is that true, Johnson? I tried calling him yesterday. He was a little punk ass. Yeah, Doesn't answer you. it would be cool to recover some like the mad cars. We gotta try and find that. Would be like full circle. Oh, my dad's old car, Wild Thing. Remember that one? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, actually yeah. for sale right now. What? Not and it still has Gibson everything on it. It's still like exactly how it was. Yeah. Just minus the rotary. Didn't that thing have yeah. like a thousand horsepower or something? No, <laughs> it was a it was a rotary, but it was on, on alcohol. That's and that's what, what on the wing it said um, runs better with alcohol. Sick. And they had Gibson Formers on the side and on alcohol. I mean, don't Porter over at Redline would probably know more, but I would say I, I think there were over six hundred to the wheels in a. But it's like a banshee. In a, run like, it's like a sixteen hundred pound car. Yeah. Like. Sick. And you run it like what are the RPMs on those motors? High, like twenty. Th- I don't even. I have no idea. Yeah. But I don't even. There were like thirty pounds of boost, and I think they revved over ten thousand. Probably, maybe that's, not. That's I don't know. Don't quote us on that. Don't quote us. Or on maybe us. you know, maybe do quote us on that and tell everybody that we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, and share it to all listen. your friends. <laughs> share <laughs> it to all your friends and tell them we don't know what we're talking about, and they need to listen. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, hopefully we see you guys in Glamis. We got to do a show in Glamis here. This. Uh, oh, that'd be sometime. rad. Be top of old. Do a fun. Yeah, that'd be dope. It'd be nice and windy for us. Oh, just guys, motors. Right. Yeah. That will be our Joe Rogan podcast with everyone all drunk. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you guys for listening, man. It was a really good time. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the channels, watch on YouTube, share it to your friends. Yeah. And that's it. Episode 10, we're out. Woohoo. Yeah. Whoa.
Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces.